Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I want to go ahead and review the Dragons of Oz deck, which was created by Ozen GH as a response to the current Angoro meta, June 2017 by the way. So this is a high curving uh, dragon deck, and right as soon as we go into this a little bit, I'll play one quick game for you guys and kind of give some wrap up thoughts. So one of the things I really like for, on a personal level about the deck is the inclusion of at least the Trailblazer and then two copies of Shadow Visions. I think this is one of the cooler combos that priests have available to them. Although in reality, most games this isn't actually very relevant simply because most people are trying to go for a win by turn 7 or 8. They're not going for turn 15, 20. Um, but the idea here is that y if you need it, you can theoretically just grab three copies of the Angoro pack from your deck and basically be playing a 45 card deck, which makes you win a pretty much any value game. The only trouble with that is that there aren't really that many games that go down to that level, but if it happens, that's really good. One of the things I question a little bit, but at the same time I do understand why the Shadow Visions are there beyond just at least is the inclusion of only one copy of Dragonfire Potion. Because this is a dragon deck, it's really good with Dragonfire Potion, because this becomes, instead of basically nuking the board, it turns into a 5 damage flame strike for five, uh, 6 mana. Now there's two reasons why there's only one copy of the Dragonfire Potion in the deck. One, it's a bit slow, and two, the Shadow Visions can churn into Dragonfire Potions if you need them in most cases. So having two Dragonfire Potions and two copies of Shadow Visions would probably be overkill because we have to remember that in the current meta there is a lot of aggro, there's a lot of hunters and a lot of uh, cheesy secret mages and that kind of thing. So you don't really want to be playing around so much, I guess, the control paladins at least until you get up to the legend rank because that's just not what people are really playing. Now, speaking of answering all the aggro decks out there, the inclusion of Fairy Dragon and Wild Pyromancer, I like those as well. Especially Pyromancer because it's just so good at clearing Hunter minions, for instance, with Power Word Shield, dealing one damage to the board. Well, we all know how Wild Pyromancer works. And then the Fairy Dragon's on top of that. Yeah, you look at it and it's a vanilla 3-2, but it's also a dragon, which is underrated because you really want those effects like Draconid Operative and Bookworm to trigger. So if you don't end up playing it as a 3-2, having it in the hand to serve as a triggering dragon can be uh, good enough to justify it as better than other 2-drops. But only specifically for decks like this, Fairy Dragon probably isn't good enough to play in your average deck. So it's interesting that we're going up against a warrior now because I haven't actually been running into many warriors lately. Uh, of course, in this case, there's two possible cases, one of which is that it's a pirate warrior and the other that it's a taunt warrior, where the Elise combo with Shadow Visions might actually be relevant. Uh, but at the same time, the taunt warrior getting the Ragnaros Super Power is a real big threat for this deck. But we have to mulligan, assuming that it's Pirate Warrior, so we don't get shot out of the game. So I think what I'm going to do is toss everything but the Wild Pyromancer and kind of hope things work out here. I would say I'm expecting him to be a Pirate Warrior, um, not just because he mulliganed all three cards, but because I think most players don't prefer to play the super heavy control decks when they're laddering. And yes, it's obviously Pirate Warrior. Um, so I'll get smacked for a few points of damage here, but the fact that I have some of these early game cards I was talking about gives me a lot better of a shot to win. Uh, I'm not going to play a 2-drop on turn 1 simply because the Wild Pyromancer is too good with the coin, and I will take a couple damage. I'm not necessarily expecting to win a matchup like this because I think that the deck is a bit on the weaker side versus aggro decks. Um, as most priest tends to be, simply because, I mean... Yeah, you have really good value tools, but if you can't deal with the board, you can easily get shot out of the game. It's actually really lucky for me that he didn't have a turn 2 play. I might even just play Fairy Dragon, which might force him to War Axe, rather than Pyromancering uh, yet. Hold on, let me think about that for a minute. So the two options, Fairy Dragon is a 3-2, he could uh, hit it twice. I could play this, but then I have to coin to justify that. Or I could Shadow Visions and try to get something like a Potion of Madness. I could also do that next turn though. I think I'm gonna go with the Fairy Dragon, and I'm not entirely sure that's the correct play here. But um, yeah, it shows how the Fairy Dragon, it, it has dual purpose though. 
It's not just a 3-2 when your hand on turn 2, but it also activates the Bookworm, activates the Draconata Operative, and it's pretty versatile in a way. So luckily for this captain, I have the Shadow Word Pain. I think I'm going to do that over playing the Tar Creeper, because this has to go. I could also do something with the Wild Pyromancer, but you know what? Actually, I'm going to play the Tar Creeper. If it trades for two of his minions, it's better to play on curve there. So you can see the strength of Tar Creeper. Um, even though it's not an elemental deck at all, this is a very good anti-aggro tool, and hopefully it holds... Uh, he could punish me with something like Heroic Strike, but uh, honestly, against the Pirate Warrior, there's only so much you can do. Sooner or later, they're going to hit you for damage. And Corcoran Elite's actually one of the better results there. And now I have to wonder, uh, how's the interaction work here? Does, I think Shadow Word Pain hits, and then Wild Pyromancer triggers. One of the things that you should know as a good player of Hearthstone, I'm merely a decent player. Um... Yeah, I did figure that was the case. So his board's clear. I actually have a decent shot to win this now. Uh, if he does something like Arcanite Reaper, he might have to hit a 3-1, which would be golden, but I'm sure he'll go face. Okay. Or he has that, and uh, I get a little bit sad there. So Shadow Ward Pain is an amazing draw here. I'm getting a little bit lucky with that one. And uh, at this point, I might want to fish with Shadow Visions to try to get a Dragonfire Potion. Um, I guess he doesn't have an Arcanite Reaper in his hand because he didn't play one to hit my guy right there. So I can probably kind of hold the board here. Um, and I definitely don't think Elise is a good play at the moment. So we're going to try to get that potion. Okay, and we missed it. But I can go for the Power Word Shield, which isn't bad either. Is that better than Potion Madness? I think it is. It's really unfortunate we didn't get the Dragonfire Potion. Wow, we're all on a Pirate Warrior deck. That's a new one. So as you can see, although Priest struggles against aggro decks, it is able to pull through. Uh, that warrior did completely run out of steam there, and it was pretty close. But it's definitely not impossible to outlast more aggressive decks and still win the game as this Dragon Priest deck. And because it is overall very strong against other control decks with the ability to draw multiple Angoro packs and draw cards out of your opponent's deck with Draconid OP, we're still being decent against the more aggressive decks in the meta. I think that the Dragons of Oz deck is pretty solid given the current meta, which is exactly what it was designed for. So if you're going to be trying Priest out anytime soon, I would say give Dragons of Oz a shot. It's a decent deck.